The men of the medieval Islamic and Arab world were integral. They were the monarchs and kings who ruled, the military officers who fought battles and conquered lands, or even the great scholars and thinkers who contributed to the Islamic golden age and whose advances in maths, physics, science has affected the way we do things up until this day. But what about the voiceless? The voiceless of then, the voiceless of now, the peasants. We mentioned that they were voiceless then, and this was because they literally had no voice. They were destined to a life of struggle, a life of labour, and their fate was sealed for them. Off their backs, great civilizations were built. Off their backs, many people benefited. And these great civilizations are often accredited to the powerful of the time. But voiceless now, why? Because when we attempt to reconstruct some sort of narrative, which can tell us a story of the life of a peasant, peasant society and interactions. You look throughout history and it's as if they never existed. No one really had any concern about the peasant's experiences and what their life was like. The only concern of what the peasant can produce for them. And therefore we can see that their position in society has affected them up until this day. So to put together some sort of narrative which may tell us a story about the life of a peasant, we must look at three aspects. The soil on which the peasant worked on, agriculture and social order. We put these three together and only then we might get some sort of insight into how a peasant lived. The first aspect, soil or the geography. Now a peasant in the medieval Arab and Islamic world was free to travel onto many different lands to find opportunities and to work. Now, this is quite different to the peasant or serf of medieval Europe who was actually tied to the land and who was part of a property. And we'll get into why later on. So he was free to travel and to find many opportunities. And the opportunities were plentiful, which leads us to the second point of agriculture. The Arabs experienced a revolution in agriculture and it was called the Arab Agricultural Revolution, which started off in the year 700 and ended in the early medieval period of 1100. The Arab agricultural revolution enabled the cultivation of land and farming to be one of the main sources of income for people from all walks of life. And this was because the Arab learned new irrigation techniques, bought new crops from India. And what this done, it rapidly changed the economies of Mesopotamia, the Mediterranean, Egypt, Sicily, even Spain. So we can see that the economies changed rapidly it became one of the most important sources of wealth and new seasons of harvesting were introduced. Usually what would happen is the Arabs would start in winter and then the crops will be ready to harvest in spring. The summer was pretty much an ago because of the climate. Nevertheless, when they went to India and found new crops, new irrigation techniques, those crops consisted of rice and hard wheat, which required extreme heat to be able to grow, which again benefited the Arabs the introduction of new seasons meant that there was now new systems of rotation. Traditionally, since the Roman times up until the start of the Arab agricultural revolution, systems of rotation meant that they would crop once every two years. But now you had a new system of rotation where you'd crop four times or more every two years. This meant that the peasant now had more work to do, more labour, more money was circulating in the economy and everyone benefited. Now speaking of the work for the peasants, there were many good lands or even bad lands to work on. So you had experts who produced manuals about how to work different types of soil, fertile soil, non-fertile soil. And from these experts, the peasants learned their trade. Some of them went east to Egypt and introduced these new irrigation techniques and they were able to cultivate land there. This led to an increase in rural populations. They now could rely on more than one harvest a year, which again meant more income, more profit, not for the peasants, but for those above them, which leads us to the last point of social order. I mentioned at the start that the peasant was a free man in the medieval Islamic and Arab world. Now, this is because of Islam. 
Again, when talking about the medieval Arab world, Islam was so integral to everyone's life. But when Islam was introduced, the principle was that no one owned another person. Everyone was a free man. Now, although the general guideline was there, whether it was practiced or not is another question. It sounds better than the life of a peasant or serf living in medieval Europe. As we mentioned earlier, they could freely travel uh, the lands to search for work. But taxes were an issue. The lands were usually owned by military officers who were appointed by the ruling body of the time. And those military officers would appoint wakils. The job of a wakil was to look after certain plots of land for the military officers. And the wakils would take taxes from the peasants, which used to constantly increase and that proved to be a problem. But it didn't stop there for the peasant. The agricultural revolution came to its demise when its conquests and invasions began. The Crusaders, the Seljuks, the Mongol sack of Baghdad ravaged the lands and fierce battles took place. What were the implications of these wars for the peasant and their main source of income, agriculture? As we mentioned previously, taxes were already a burden, but this only became worse. Invaders had no respect for the agricultural advances, which meant many fertile lands and crops were destroyed. Corruption became prevalent between the military officers and this meant even higher taxes for the peasant. Some would have to flee and seek refuge somewhere else or others stay and be persecuted. Their rights were reduced almost to the level of serfdom. Some historians have even argued that it isn't even possible to write some sort of valid history for the peasant. The injustice in their position in society back then continues to affect them up until today.